Hi guys, it's Chris from the Ultimate Recycler here. Uh, I do a lot of garage sales and shed cleanouts, and if you follow my channel, you'll see some examples of that. And I like to uh, to show you some treasures I find and give you some tips on how to to find some good gear and what to look for. Now, here's an example that I've had before, and I thought it'd be a good one to show you. I picked these two tins up at a clearing sale just last weekend. Uh, they were in a box with other oil products. Now I recognise the tins as being a bit older and the shape is actually a, a vintage kerosene tin. This one's marked uh, two stroke mower, um, mower fuel it is. This one wasn't marked at all, but they've been painted. Now in my experience, a lot of older folk painted, uh, well they painted all sorts of things. They painted furniture, but they painted tins and a lot of them were done in the sort of 50s and 60s and what the paint can do it can hide the true identity of the tin now I've started to clean this one up and you'll see that it's beautiful and colorful underneath it's actually a Keltex uh, kerosene tin and this one would I presume be the same I've got some of the paint off this one as well and there we go Keltex so they're really hidden treasures and if these two tins weren't painted and in this box at the auction the bidding would have probably cleared a hundred dollars just based on these tins as it turned out i paid five dollars for the box lot and i actually bought it for something else and these tins are a bit of a bonus so to clean them up well this one's been painted with a thick enamel paint now sometimes the enamel will actually soften in the sun and it will simply peel off. Uh, we're never quite that lucky. Uh, this one I left it in the sun and it softened a bit but I could only scrape a bit and of course you risk damaging the advertising underneath. So what I've been doing is I've got a little tub here and I'll just pour a bit of petrol, it's on a bit of an angle, pour a bit of petrol in there and leave the tin soak for probably about half an hour. To an hour it doesn't seem to affect the advertising because it's a kerosene tin anyway so it's the advertising sort of uh, impervious i guess to petroleum products to a degree you wouldn't leave it soaking for days so i'll just leave it i'll put a bit of petrol in there at the moment soak one section and i'm using some fine steel wool carefully and it does remove the softened paint uh, of course, you don't want to scrub it too severely with steel wool or you will take off the advertising underneath. So the enamel paints come off reasonably well with a little bit of care. This one was actually a bit different and this one has a layer of enamel paint on the outside and in the sun it actually softens and it does peel off like a thin film of plastic. And that would be beautifully easy but this one unfortunately had another coat of paint underneath which is, I think it's an acrylic paint because it doesn't seem to be affected at all by petrol. So I actually left that soaking in water overnight on that half of the tin. And again, I used the fine steel wool. Uh, I think the triple O grade, a very fine one anyway. And it will take the acrylic paint off because it's quite a thin layer. But again, you have to be very careful that and you can see some of the high spots on the paint here. It's actually taken the red back to a white undercoat. So a bit of careful work. It takes a little while, but you know we're going to have some great tins at the end of it. So I'll finish cleaning them up and I'll show you what the end product looks like. I'll also show you another tin I did a couple of years ago that I found in a kitchen of a farmhouse, and that turned out to be a ripper treasure. So um, I'll get back to these and show you how they turn out. And there's our two tins all finished. Um, this one with the, just the green acrylic paint, uh, sorry, the green enamel paint, um, did clean up very well. It was quite easy to do. Didn't take long at all, probably 15, 20 minutes in total. Uh, just rolling it around and leaving it soaking the petrol for a little bit each time. Um, it looks like it's been burnt or something on the top there at some stage, it's been hot and also it obviously was boat fuel at one stage but I didn't try to get that off I think it just adds a bit of character to the, to the tin so that's cleaned up really well and I would uh, I guess I'd probably date that to the 1950s or so um, 
it's a gallon tin it doesn't actually say a gallon on there but uh, I would value that tin I reckon that all hold $75 in the shop um, great display piece good color hasn't faded the paints actually done a good job of of protecting the the uh, under ad, underlying advertising uh, this one was more of a challenge and it's the first one I've had that has had a layer of acrylic underneath enamel and you can see it did take some red off with the steel wool I probably rushed it a little bit but um, you know it's still it's nice character it's still a great tin and I think I should be able to get 40 45 dollars for that one in that condition so well well over a hundred dollars return on those two tins um, garage nalia or petrol related items are extremely popular they have been for for quite a long time now and uh, I have people in the shop all the time asking for this sort of stuff so that finishes these two um, it gives you an idea of what to look out for uh, anything that's been painted you just never know what the paints hiding uh, and I'll show you now a tin I found a few years ago in the kitchen of an old farmhouse here it is before I started um, it was a bit of a surprise this one I just saw a little bit of color down the bottom underneath the cream heavy um, cream paint it was a enamel paint so I started peeling it back and this is what I found um, I didn't get a photo of it finished um, and sorry for the quality of these shots because I didn't have a very good camera at the time but this particular tin turned out to be quite a rare Australian tin um, and I actually on sold it to another dealer and this was probably about oh, eight years ago I sold it to another dealer for about $200 so a really good um, good profit from something that most dealers would uh, either just throw in a five dollar bin or, or not even try to retail uh, and this was probably the best one I found but I do look out for them all the time now and another example before I go uh, this is a more common tin but still quite a collectible one uh, the bushels uh, large size tin again this had a, a cream enamel paint over it probably done in the 50s or 60s and uh, even though this didn't clean up all that well because I don't think the tin was in the best condition uh, before, when it was painted uh, it still is a much better return obviously with a, a tin with advertising rather than just a plain colour so thanks for watching um, I hope you do well looking for treasures under paint uh, it just shows that you really can't judge a tin by its cover so uh, thanks for watching hope you enjoy these videos uh, please subscribe to my channel and give me some feedback and uh, look out for me in the next video.